told us so not very far from here and she has her team with her today and we also have someone from let me just quickly grab the name just bear with me a second who is streaming online miss she's the ceo miss jackie she's a medical biochemist a science teacher and she's also a qualified trichologist she's also going to be giving us some question and answers so at maybe at the end of near to the middle of the session you will see her pop on the screen uh, just to give you a little bit more background of about miss belinda she's also a wife and a mother of three lovely children so you might see the girls here that's doing a presentation with her praise and we also she's also married sorry i mentioned that already her husband is also a reverend so they're from the church and also her goal is to deepen people understanding of hair and scalp issues. So she really closed her clinic today just she could bring all that knowledge to us. And I'm so honored and privileged to have you in her midst today. So let's just welcome Miss Belinda as she take the floor with us. Thank you so much. And um I thank God for this opportunity. And first of all, I thank God for your pastor that he started with prayer. Because without God, there's nothing that can be achieved. My husband is a pastor as well. So when she saw a little video of where I went to the church giving the talk, she said, Belinda, can you come to my church? I know some ladies there, they will benefit from you. I said, yes. Oh, how much do you charge? I said, church, I will not charge you. Because if you do something for God, God will bless you double. So I'll come for free. She said, Belinda, I'll register, I'll do everything. I said, don't worry. Even if it's one or two people, I am going to give that knowledge. And that knowledge can go far. So my name is Belinda Asafoje. I'm married to um, Reverend Herman Asafoje. We have a Baptist church as well. And I'm a trichologist. And I've been in the hairdressing industry for over 30 years, as she said. And I've seen everything from the itchy scalp, scaly scalp condition, baldness, patches, hair shedding, hair breakage, hence, trichology. So I went to school as well to study hair and scalp condition so that I can help people. Because when I was a hairdresser, and I am still a hairdresser, people said, Belinda, what can I do? to my hair is breaking, or I have a lot of dandruff. All we think about is oil. Just put oil on top to cover your, your problem. But that is not the issue. You actually need to, to um, tackle the problem. So I'm gonna educate you today. If you don't understand anything and you don't want to ask questions in front of everyone, you can ask personally to me. You can come to me one-to-one -one because some of the consultations or um, some questions are very um, personal to everyone, if you don't want to. And there will be another lady, uh, my co a colleague of mine, who can answer some questions as well. So before I start, I'll ask my gentleman there to start putting the PowerPoint on, so that you, I'll go through with you, so that I can show you some videos before I start. So if you can put on the intro video, please. Can we have the sound? Is it possible to get the sound?
thank you. It was all about how I take my course. And it comes to trichology consultation, holistic discipline, which we take everything into consideration. So it's not just one thing that happens to you before you start losing hair. There's a lot of, it's multifactorial. But we take a lot of things into consideration. So obviously, let me just explain what is going on. When anybody comes to me, I first of all do a consultation first. I don't just get into, let me provide you this oil or cream. No, hair loss is medical. It gets to a point where surgeries are even um, added onto it. So I check the scalp and see how severe the problem is. Because you can see some of the scalp, it's the, all the hair is gone. And I'll dip deep into all the issues. We deal with nutrition as well. What you eat is also important. You are what you eat. And then stress as well. Medication can also cause hair loss. Products, excessive products can also cause hair loss. So all I'm doing is examining the hair, using the trachoscopy machine to see what the follicles are telling me. That is exactly what the diagnosis is going to be based on. So I, I, I explain everything that I see. I explain everything that is going on during the consultation. And obviously, if you need help with your hair, I'm a hairdresser as well. So after the diagnosis, I go through the process of how to grow your hair back or how to manage what you have. This is keratoelectric treatment, especially for those who have severe dandruff. It's kind of a condition. You need to be able to use the appropriate treatment to, to, to reduce it because it's a condition that is not, it's uncurable. It's manageable, but it's not curable. But there are triggers as well. So if you know what the triggers are and the appropriate shampoos and conditioner to use, you will not have flare-ups. So that's what I'm doing, and I obviously I do children's hair as well because some mothers do too much of heavy styling on their children, and they lose their hair. As young as six, seven, they've already lost their hairline. So I'm going to talk about that as well today. Thank you. If you can go on the PowerPoints, please. What you should know about hair loss, that is the topic today, because there's a lot of misinformation there, both on YouTube, social media, and people are getting confused and doing things that are actually aggravating the problem or making the problem worse. The next slide, please. So, she said a little bit about me. Um, I have a salon, which is called Bell's Beauty Complex, and a Trinity Trichology Clinic as well. And married to Reverend Herman, a mother of three girls. I'm a foster carer as well for 11 years. And um, I educate people about hair health. The next slide, please. My expertise, I've, I've been trained for so different styles, braids, weaves, whatever, treatments as well. So when it comes to, even if you've lost all your hair and there's no hope, I can give you hope in terms of cosmetic, wigs, weaves. That is not going to make your case worse because it gets to a point where there's nothing to be done. And you have to have your confidence. You have to have the, your, your self-esteem back. There's also things that I can do for you as well. And I've worked over 23,000 people here. 
and I provide consultation as well. The next one, please. So, clearing up some misinformation online, especially because some people always go online, and some of the things you see online, before I used to believe them, but when I educated myself and it became a trichologist, like, wow, lack of knowledge, you do things that actually make you perish, whether in eating or hair care practices or whatever. So, um, the word alopecia is a simple term of uh, hair loss. And within hair loss, we have over thousands of types of hair loss. So, alopecia areata, tractional alopecia, CCCA, so many. So, the term alopecia is hair loss. But which type of hair loss do you have? So, somebody will come to us and say, Belinda, please, I have hair loss. Can you recommend something? I said, no. We have to diagnose and know which type of hair loss you have. So that is the term. And hair loss is a very complex problem. Sometimes it's medical. So you need medical attention. Could be external practices, which is our hair care practices. The way we style our hair, the way we braid our hair, the chemicals we put our hair can also contribute to hair loss or hair breakage. There's over dozens of different types of hair loss. I said already, there's scarring. Scarring means it's gone. All your hair follicles are dead. So there's nothing to regenerate new hairs. This is why I'm here. If you seek help now, you can save some hair. But if you get to the stage where there's no hope, even if you want to do transplants, it's a lot of money. So seek help now. If you know anyone who is losing their hair, don't take, oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just, it's something. You don't just lose your hair. There's non-scarring. Non-scarring means there's a potential of growth. That means it's, it's temporal. So if we identify the causes or what is causing the hair loss, then we can actually help the hair reduce the amount of hair that is breaking. All right, dandruff, psoriasis, or seborrheic dermatitis. When people see this on their scalp, oh, I have dry scalp, oh, don't worry. Or um, I think it's just flakes. I didn't wash my hair. It's a problem. We have to wash our hair at least four times a month or two times a month. But because, especially, I'll talk about black women, because our hair care practices, our hair styling, we don't want to mess it up because we've spent so much money in our, on our weaves and our braids. We don't want to wash it. We don't even swim because we have a weave on. So if you have scaly scalp condition, and on top of it, you put in thick oils, and you're not washing your hair, what's going to happen? You are in the train and like, interview, you're like, we do it. We all do it. So all I will urge you is to cleanse your scalp. Don't just wash your hair. Some people have weaves on for a month, six weeks. They take it out, just wash, and they're going in the shower. They don't even have treatment, deep conditioning treatment. If you have seborrheic dermatitis or psoriasis, you're going to make it worse because they are fungi. They are malicious species. They live on our scalp. They will not bother you if you clean your scalp environment, but if you don't, they will multiply. Okay? And this kind of, treat, uh, this kind of problem, I'm going to uh, stress a bit more on that. We all do it. We have it. When you have this kind of problems, you have to have a proper treatment. I do one called keratinoid treatment, where it's a specific customized treatment after the diagnosis, because we have to know the percentage of the treatment we're doing for you. Because some of them have a lot, and some of them don't. So we have to know what we're actually doing for you. It's necessary to cleanse your scalp. Yes, common condition that affects the scalp. Causes scaly patches. Sometimes you can scratch your hair. People actually lose their hair by scratching too much. Stubborn dandruff, yes, can affect oily areas like the face, the nose, eyebrows, areas in the eyelids, wherever there's hair. Sometimes you have psoriasis as well or seborrheic dermatitis. 
common causes can be stress. People have it, but sometimes they get more because they are stressed. It's a trigger. Everything is a trigger. If you have headache, sometimes you are tired, or sometimes you're not drinking enough of water, so you can trigger. Sometimes it's sham shampoos that you are using that you're not supposed to use on your scalp. If you have this condition, you cannot just go to the shop and ask anybody who is standing there for a shampoo because your scalp is itching. You need to get a diagnosis and get shampoo that you're going to use all the time and it's going to reduce the amount of flakes that comes. Treatments recommended upon consultation, not curable but manageable. If somebody tells you seborrheic or psoriasis is curable, no, it's manageable because it's a hormonal changes. It's something that you have. You can have dry scalp. Dry scalp is when you don't, you don't wash enough, but these are thick. If you can see on the Caucasian skin, because the, the color is fair, it's extended. In, in, in black people, you see like a dark, dark gray, and you can sometimes extend it on the hairline or even by the ears. So the next one, please. Now, I'm talking about male and female part in baldness. If you don't have the gene, you will not have this. It's genetic condition. Your dad might have it, or your mom's side, or your dad's side, uncles. It's triggered sometimes by stress. You know, puberty, when you, you, the, the men, when they reach puberty, sometimes it's very strong and they are stressed as well. They will start boarding earlier than they should. It's a testosterone and it's converted by dihydrotestosterone, 5 alpha reductase. So when it happens, it attacks, attacks the hair that are sensitive and then they start reducing hair. They start losing hair. So sometimes it starts by temporal, this side, or sometimes you see them from here. Okay, there are treatments available for it if um, they seek help earlier. However, a diagnosis needs to be done for them to see what stage they are or what stage can, they are to be helped. Stress is number one factor. Some people have the condition, but they do not start boarding until their late 40s. But nowadays, I see the young men, we do start boarding too early. They're, either the, 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 the gene is very strong or they are stressed. So stress is a trigger as well. And with women, the clinical presentation is different. You can see women start only from here. You can see that the, the, they have only thinning or diffuse hair loss on the um, parietal area or the crown area. The next one, please. Telogen effluvium. This is basically excess shedding. And I'm gonna stay here a bit, about 10, five minutes. It's very, very important. Seen in a lot post-COVID because fever, people are sick, they're on medication, so they lose hair, they are stressed. People were home, they are not working, they don't have money. Stress from family, from work, all sorts. So this is non-scarring, which means if the problem is sorted out, you can grow your hair. Sometimes it's chronic, because this month you are stressed, the next month you're not stressed. So your hair keep falling, getting better, keeps falling. Sometimes medication, if your medication, a continuous medication, diabetes, blood pressure, all that, you lose hair because you're on medication and you cannot stop your medication because of that. So what we do is the hair that is growing, I have treatment in the salon that we manage and treat the hair that is growing so it doesn't fall. And then um, stress, stress is the trigger of everything. Some people are so stressed, they don't even know they are stressed. Yes, because we go on and on and on. We don't feel that we are stressed because we think everything is our responsibility. We're taking care of family, work, everything, life makes us stressed. So when they come, I was like, are you stressed? He said, no. I said, you really? Okay, don't worry. When I do the trachoscopy examination, I will know you are stressed because your follicles is going to tell me that this lady is stressed. And if you're on medication and you're stressed as well, some people don't even sleep enough. That can contribute to hair loss. They don't drink enough water. You know, so that can contribute as well. Family planning as well can contribute to hair loss. Childbirth. 
people have babies, and after that, the hormonal changes, they lose hair. But after that, they will regain the hair back. Some of them will not go back again, but sometimes they can regain the hair. Pregnancy, um, genetic hair loss as well can cause that thyroid. Some people do not know they have thyroid. So they think they're just losing their hair. So when you start losing, you know, we lose hair every day. 10% we lose our hair every day. Um, we have the anagen phase, which is the growing phase, catogen phase, which is the transitioning telogen phase, and the early anagen. So we, we go, we have hair cycle, okay? But when you combine your hair, every day you see a lot, even in the shower, you can feel that, mm -mm, this is, you know yourself, you know your hair. You can see that, mm -mm, this is not me. There's something going on. Then your body is trying to tell you something by your hair. So excess shedding is dangerous because you could be having thyroid, you don't even know. But when you come to us, we take you to the GP, we ask for specific blood tests done, and then when the results come, we will identify the problem, and then that can help you. And then we have fever and injection as well, renal failure, I mean, if you have um, kidney infections as well, or if you have problems with your kidney, sometimes you lose hair as well. Medication, I said it before, loss of blood, if you lose, a lot of blood like fibroids or if you have an operation and you lose blood, you can lose your hair. It doesn't happen when the operation happens or when you have the operation done, three months after. So you think, oh my God, I just started losing my hair. No, it has happened already. Three months after, that is when the hair is shedding more. Okay, and poor diet, very, very important. I'm sure all of us here, we like cooking, but you get to a point where you have to eliminate oils, um, fry foods, and eat more greens and beans and protein. Make sure you add all those things in your diet. Because you know what? When we have our food, the body uses the nutrients for the liver, kidneys, heart, and all that. Hair, skin, and nails is the last thing. So if you don't have enough nutrients, then it's not enough to even extend to the hair follicles. So nutrition is very important as well. The next one, excess shedding. If you see this, combing your hair, you see a lot of hair, please run. Go to your GP or go to dermatolo uh, derm uh, dermatology or go to trichology. Find me and ask what is going on, then we can help you. Alopecia areata, they are bald patches. Sometimes you see people with bald patches. That is non scarring That can be, um, the hair can grow back. But it happens with stress and also trauma. Somebody will sleep, and the next day she wakes up or he wakes up, they have a lot of patches. It's a traumatic event that has, has happened in their life. Even children, you don't know, they are stressed, but it uh, can only reflect by the hair. So you see patches as well, um, found on the scalp, eyebrows, or the body. It's autoimmune disease triggered by stress. I mentioned that. In severe cases, they lose hair all over the head. It's called alopecia totalis. And then they can even lose hair all over the body. That is universalis. Seen in men, women, children, all ethnicity, everyone living can experience that as well. The next one. So you can see that. The first one is totalis, that means they've lost hair all over their hair. Second one is advanced AA, alopecia areata. And then the other one is ophysis. If you have this, it can, it's sometimes incurable, the back for the back. So you always have to seek help as soon as you see these things, these signs as well. It starts smaller patches, but sometimes it can join together or sometimes just have different patches all over the head, yeah. Traction alopecia. This is serious. Traction alopecia is actually putting a lot of tension on your scalp. Tight braids, weaves, cornrows, tiny braids. This is what happens if you do that to your scalp. You can see the first one is weave. And actually, the weave was covering it, but one way or the other, it has been re re revealed. So all I can say 
about this is we tend to do that a lot. Even now, when I have clients come into the salon and they want to have braids done, I tell them, you cannot do the braids too tight because it's going to break. Oh, I want it neat. I want it to be smooth. I say, you don't need your hair to be smooth. It has to be firm, but it doesn't have to be tight because you'll get to a point where all those follicles will be angry and they will not grow again. And they keep the hair in too long, two months. Why? Even if you're not ready to braid your hair again or weave again, just take it out. If you spend 200 pounds, 300 pounds braiding your hair and you can't sleep and you can see bumps and you've got a headache, take it out. Why, why are you suffering? Yes, why are you suffering? Because of the money, if you lose your hair and you want transplantation and the, and the, and the, and the treatment, it's a lot of money. So why don't you save yourself from the hassle? When they come, oh, can you pick all these small, small ones? I'm not picking all those small, small ones. Those are the dangerous ones. They are baby hairs. Leave them alone. You don't have to look neat and presentable. Presentable, yeah, but not like you have got a facelift. That's why I'm trying to educate because people come to me, they've lost a lot of hair. And some of them don't have money to have transplant or even do the treatment. So if you try and stop those practices, it will help. If you go to a salon where they make your hair tight, do not go back again. And sometimes the clothes themselves are the problem. They will tell you, no, I want it tight. I want it to last. How long do you want the hair to last? One year? Yeah, I want it to last. No. No. And the hairdressers too, sometimes they don't have the knowledge. They want to please the customer. Says, okay, don't worry, I'll do it for you. And they will make it tight. You can't even smile. You can't, you, you'll be talking to someone, but you're angry inside. You, 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 you sleep, you put your hair like that, then you turn. Because no, no, you're not comfortable. Don't do that to yourself. And we do that to our, our children as well. Even though they can't speak. We do heavy styles on them, braids, long, tight, small, and then these children are suffering. And when they tell you, mommy, my hair hurts, keep quiet, it will last. But the child is suffering. By the time they are 13, 14, 15, their hairline starts from here. And then they are stuck with wicks. And then they put glue on top of the problem. So the child is walking around unhappy because they can leave their own hair and feel the natural hair, and feel that they look beautiful, and feel that they, they, they have confidence because of aunties, moms, and grandmoms. But now, our children are educating themselves. They are, they, I'm educating them. They are learning as well. You know, I see online. Look, look at that. Look at this. Yes. I refuse customers all the time. When they come to me, I assess your hair and the style you tell me to do, if I know it's going to harm your hair or too much tension on the follicles, I'll not do it. I'll tell you to go. That is me now. Before, I didn't know better. I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Like, yeah, isn't it? They make it tight. And the next month, the hair is broken after they take it off. Now, I refuse customers all the time because I have principles and I have, I have the knowledge to know what is going to happen. So there are some clients that actually need help. They need somebody like us to tell them, no, I'm not doing it. But I will help you. You brought this style, but if you do this style, all your hairline will be gone after the style is taken out. So let's do this. You help them. I help them to actually realize. Because some of them don't know. And some of the hairdressers too don't know. They will just pick every little bit of your hair on your head. Just because you want to achieve a certain style. Why? You don't have to avoid this kind of braid. Avoid any tight cornrows. Avoid any tight crochet braids. Please do not put glues on your, on your hairline. Just because you want to look good for just a short while. Because you get to a stage where you don't want the braids anymore. You don't want to weave anymore. But you don't have any hair. You don't have any hair to walk around with. The next one, please. I will stay here as well. Central centrifugal cicatricia alopecia. I'm sorry, it's too long, but this is one of the problems that I see a lot in my clinic. And it happens to only black people, black women, dark skinned women. Studies have found that it's a genetic condition, it's called PAC 13. We 
all have it. It depends on what triggers it. It depends on how severe you're going to have it when you are 30, 40, 50. It's all about bathing as well. Tight braids, hair care practices, just like I mentioned before, hot combs. Can you imagine you relax your hair? You've already changed the composition of your hair. And then you put blow dryer. And then you put straightener. 300 and 200 and something, whatever. The heat on your hair. Can you imagine what you're doing to your hair? So if you want to do that, it's up to you. But you cannot be straightening your hair every week because you want to silk. Your hair is not silk. If you want it to manage manageable, that's fine. But you have to do treatment on the hair itself to keep the hair in. Because sometimes some people have a lot of natural hair. They can't handle it. So they want to have uh, some ways of making it very manageable which is all fine, but you, I will tell you what is going to happen when you do that. And when you do that as well, I can tell you what you can do, what kind of treatment to do, avoid this, avoid that, so you don't lose your hair. And it's a progressive, which leads to shiny and scarred as well. So you can see, it's very shiny. Sometimes there's no hair to even revive. Sometimes the, it's hard. That means the follicles are not even available to help, for any help to be done. Sometimes, if it's not too late, you can get help. It starts very small. This is how it starts. It starts like a small patch, either in the middle, on the side, and then a centrifugal, it goes round. So one year, two years, three years, four years, and you keep braiding, you keep relaxing, you keep putting bleach on your hair, then you end up like that. So when you see something like that, get help. Sometimes the scalp is inflamed as well, you might need steroids. You need to slow it down when it happens like that. And if there's hope and there's follicles, there's hell as well. There's treatment as well to help. It is not too late. That is why I'm here. For you to start treatment as soon as possible. Severe permanent hair and loss and the scar. If it happens like that, then you come. I'll find some nice work for you. Or I'll do certain something that will keep you a bit happy. But please make sure you seek help now if you see all things. Thank you, Carol. Next one, please. As you can see there, it started like a very small patch. And then, and you know, sometimes some women have male pattern, female pattern baldness. So imagine if you have female pattern baldness in your gene. And then you have this as well. So it's faster. If you don't have the genetic condition of the female pattern but next, then slowly. But if you have those two, and then you are stressed as well, then you have the excess shedding. So your hair will just quickly, you get bored as fast as your hair started growing. So I emphasize a lot on this. Please do not braid your hair too tight. Do not relax your hair every three weeks. When you see a little bit of growth, you relax your hair. And then on top of it, you put color. And on top of it, you put straightener. Why? We are educating ourselves. I used to do that for clients, but I don't do that anymore because I know what is going to happen. Next one, please. There is always hope for stress, for, for hair loss. Do not let hair loss become permanent if it doesn't have to. And most of the cases, it doesn't have to. But when we're losing our hair, instead of us to find the cure, we go and buy products. When you're losing your hair, it's not about products. Some products can help, yes, when it's not too late. That is the first stage. It will help, some oils can help grow the hairline and you stop what you're doing. Don't go in them for them to braid your hair too tight. 
and then the secondary is medical third is talking about surgery or transplantation so it's not too late any symptoms itchiness pain fatigue stress fever burning sensations dandruff please come because some of these are triggers of hair loss sometimes you feel like there's something crawling on your scalp sometimes you feel like it's burning you know these are signs that you're losing your hair there's something going on so please seek help sometimes we take personal and medical history as well to diagnose because some people are on medication or so many things so they're losing their hair not genetically and sometimes to nutrition medication supplements some people just go and buy supplements they don't even know what they need I used to do that I just go because oh I'm tired or I think I need vitamin D or I need vitamin whatever and I just go to the shop and buy loads and then you, you can even lose hair overdosing I only recommend supplements after the blood test, then we know whether you are insufficient or deficient. Then we can recommend the appropriate um, um, dose for you. But because they say oh, when you are 30 or 40, when you are tired, you need supplements, you just go and buy. You can get that in food as well if you eat well and then you supplement. That's why I call supplements. What are you supplementing for? Do you know what you're supplementing for? Or just because they say you should go and buy it, you buy it. Um, products as well can contribute because some people have when I have consultations sometimes I tell them to bring their hair products they have suitcase of hair products why because you don't want to change your 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 lifestyle and your practices so you get bought easily you go to the shop because your hair you receive your hairline you buy one oil or one whatever and then after two months you get tired it's not growing then you go and buy another one so your dressing mirror has about 200 products and they are all confused. Your hair is confused. They don't even know which one is acting, which one is working. But you keep buying. Why don't you find out the problem? First, two months, I'm tired. This one is not growing. You go on YouTube, they tell you, oh, my hair grew in three weeks by using this. No. If you have cicatricia, permanent hair loss, your hair is not going to grow in three weeks. Genetically, it won't. If your hair grows an inch a month, it will grow an inch a month. It doesn't matter if you put gold oil on your scalp. If it grows and you braid your hair and it comes off, don't blame the oil. So don't spend too much because sometimes you need sh shampoo, a good uh, uh, conditioner and a good oil, not thick oils because it will clog up your pores. Don't do that. Your, your scalp needs to be clean all the time. Not those thick, thick oil. Like when you scratch, you can feel all that. No, don't do that anymore. So, any recent test for when you come to the consultation, identify the problem. That is it. This is what we ask sometimes for the GPs. Ferritin, vitamin D, thyroid panel, um, hormone, hormones, and such as estrogen. These are some of the things we ask the GP to do after you come for consultation and we, it's actually happening. So it's very, very important to come for. Tips for you. Thank you. Practice responsible styling techniques. Do not let anybody make you feel that your hair is on fire because you lose hair. Sometimes hair that are not ready to fall comes out because there's too much tension. You see a lot of white, white hairs on your hairline or the back. Those are hair that are not ready to fall, but it's coming off because of the tightness of the style. Losing all tight hairstyles. Avoid raw, thick oils on your scalp. Avoid raw, thick oils on your scalp. Reduce stress. Because most of the customers I see as well, or patients I see, stress is triggering a lot of things for them. I'm sure most of you here are Christians. Leave everything to God. 
and live one day at a time. The things that you can sort out, sort it out. The things that you can sort out, sleep and leave it to God. Because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. There's some problems, if you can deal with it, yes, try. The ones that you can't, leave it to God. Or leave it for the next day. I know sometimes it's hard. You can say, I'm, you're in my shoes. Yes, I'm not in your shoes. But all I can say is, live one day at a time. Stress can cause or worsen your hair loss. Your medication. Your work is stressful. Life is stressful. You're doing hair tight braids. So your hair loss is just as fast as your stress is coming every time. Reduce stress, please. Drink a lot of water. Some people like fizzy drinks and sugar and no exercise. So everything is body. You wonder why you're losing your hair, your skin is breaking and you have pimples or rashes everywhere. It's because you're accumulating things that are not good for the body. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Think about anything that goes in your system. From now, think about it. Do I want to end up this way? Mm, KFC here and there, why not? But not every day. Pizza, why not? But not every day. If you can cook your food, yeah. Grill, not fry. In the oven. I mean, we are good in cooking. You know, our rice, the peas, they are very healthy. We should go back to it. Greens, vegetables, food, water. It's clear. You can see what is in there. There's no, nothing written there. Drink as much as you can. I don't like the water because I want to busy. So I bought a bottle and the bottle is just by my desk. So anytime I see, I sip. Because we are too busy to even drink water. So make it a habit so that you always have water around you. Eat balanced diet. Make sure what you're eating has more vegetables than the carbohydrates, even though we need them. But choose which type of carbohydrate you want to eat or you want to have and exercise as much as possible if you can. What I was saying is, Kel, can you help me please? Let me go back here so that you can see. Okay, this is the hair structure, yeah? This is the bulge area and the sebaceous glands. If you have non-scarring alopecia or non-scarring hair loss, this is not affected. This area is not affected. Hair can grow back. If you have scarring alopecia, like the CCTAs and stuff like that, or the traction, that means the bulge area and the sebaceous glands are gone. You don't have this anymore. It's like you don't have a womb. So you can't generate more hair or any hair at all. So please, this is your scalp. That's the hair. This is dead. This is the one we are fighting for. Always buying product and going to the shops and we are not taking care of this. If you don't take care of this, you're going to lose all. If you don't take care of that, some hair cannot even grow because your, your, your scalp is so dirty, clogged up, dandruff, scaly. The hairs are not even ready to grow. It's like you plant a seed and you've put a stone on it. How is it going to grow? Cleanse your scalp because that will help the hair that needs to grow in an optimal environment to grow. Thank you, Kel. One, please. So, treatment available. We have PRP, placelet, rich plasma, stem, and on the diagnosis, we take your blood, and then we put in a centrifuge, we spin it, we get a stem cell out, or the plasma out, and we inject it back to your own scalp. So, it's your own your own product, your own uh, kind of, um, your own blood going back to your blood. So it's nobody's blood. So it's, it's, it's yours. There's no chemical. And then we have as well, um, um, light therapy as well, hair restoration treatment, which is still led for sometimes. It's non-invasive. If you don't want the blood to be taken, because some people don't like blood, as soon as they see the, their needle that is going already. And sometimes people are not compatible for it, like cancer or you have deficiencies as well. We cannot use that. So we, we do all these checks before we do the treatment. And we have um, hair loss restoration. That is non-invasive as well. It's the same procedure. However, we don't take your blood. So we use the peptide and then we put it on your scalp after we use the microneedling or the damarola. 
that is available as well. And we have oxygen treatments, which is customized hair treatment. After the, treat after the consultation, I'll be able to help you with other treatment that is available. But you have to know that I'll always tell the truth because the truth shall set you free. I'm not going to lie to you. My dear, your hair will not grow back. So let's find out what we can do to make you happy. Your hair will grow back. This is what we have to do. But you have to be determined to listen. Some people don't want to listen. Because if you are coloring your hair with bleach, and you're losing your hair, and you have an inflamed scalp, and I tell you not to do it, wait a little bit, but because of your self-esteem or your mental state, you want to do it because that's how you want to feel good. I will hold your hand. Call me when you are stressed out. But then I can't. I say, you can't. Let's do it. One week here, two weeks there, three weeks. And by the time you realize, you don't do this anymore, and you start um, bringing your hair back as well. So, thank you for listening. And please book in if you want. Hello? Come again? Yes. I told um, Melissa to, to give me two people to just do a live um, consultation for me to show you what I see when you come to me. So I don't know who she's chosen. So if you can come and take your high seat, whoever is coming. Are you ready to be embarrassed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't be worried now. There you go. Me and Mama. <laughs> All right. Right now, I can see there's a bit of breakage, okay, because some of the hairs are shorter than others. And obviously, she needs trimming as well. Please trim your hair a lot, most of the time, because if you don't trim your hair, it tangles, and then when you comb it, it breaks. So can trim, please. All right. There are some things that I, s I will see. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say because it's personal. I'm just gonna tell you a few things that I see, but I'm not gonna tell you that. Oh, the diagnosis is what I see. So that's what it means. No. Okay. If you don't want to look, you can just look away. <laughs> All right. So that's her scalp. This is what I see when you come to me. After you tell me you're not stressed, I will know you are stressed from here. After you tell me, oh, I just washed my hair before I came, I'll see. <laughs> and then you will look together with me, okay? So um, she's got a bit of deep pigmented hair, which means some of the hair is really good. You know, it hasn't got a lot of problem. There are a bit of spaces here and there. She's got a lovely grays as well. You see those white bits? Those are the gray hairs. Um, let me go to the hairline. You see? Like the parietal area or the occipital area or the crown area. So that is why you should leave your hairlines alone. If you are braiding, please remove your hair. Like, don't touch your hairline because it's very sensitive and very soft. Come again. Yes, sometimes hats can cause that hair ties because you do that all the time. And sometimes wigs. I know people who don't braid their hair. Wigs alone can break their hair because it's there eight hours or 12 hours a day, five days a week or seven days a week. So, obviously, you, because it's like sitting on you, on your hair follicles, all the time. Even men who wear helmets and hats, they start losing hair, the hairline, because it's constantly there. That's why you have to alternate. I say, okay, sometimes you can use wigs, but it has to be wisely used, not all the time, sitting there. And imagine if the girls, they're putting glues there. They put glue, and their hairline starts from here. No braids at all. I know what I see. I'm not going to tell you what I see, but at least 
this is how I see your scalp because mom is coming to me for consultation. So then we can discuss the way forward. So this is what I see when you come to me and then I'll be telling you everything that I see. I will explain everything to you and the way forward or the diagnosis and the recommendations. Okay, mom? You're right. Well done. Next. Next. Yeah. Who was the second person you chose? Just, can I just say that, remember, this is just, um, as Belinda has mentioned, when it, you're not getting a diagnosis immediately from what you're seeing here, is a lot deeper than this. This is, this is very preliminary. I mean, it's just, it's just, a, just on <laughs> there's a scratch of the surface, okay? So, um, yeah, I'll continue. Thank you. <laughs> Mum, when did you wash your hair? <laughs> oh, you can't remember. That's good. It's good you can't remember. <laughs> So that means you don't wash your hair twice a month <laughs> or once every day. <laughs> last week, that's good. Okay, so she washed her hair last week. You can see a bit of um, dry scalp. Oh, mom, do you want to see? Do you want to see yourself as well? Yeah. Okay, let's turn. She's growing gracefully. <laughs> yes. So that's your hairline. I think she scratched a bit or whatever. So she's got a bit of erythema, like redness on the scalp. Her hair is thin, not necessarily that she's losing her hair. Age some make your hair thin. Menopause as well, premenopause. So sometimes it happens. Some people have got thick hair. Some don't have thick hair, but it doesn't mean that it's not healthy. Yeah. No, it's not awful, mom. <laughs> You've done well because you still have hairline. So just this side is a bit... Um, light but that doesn't mean i don't know her lifestyle or her care practice previously but as you can see it's a bit different from the whole hair all right thank you mom Cordelia, have we got the cleanser for the tree? The cleanser for the tree. When you relax your hair, you've changed the composition of your hair structure. Even though it's easy to manage, you see it's thin, it's very light because it has been relaxed. However, the follicles remain the same. She's got a bit of oily scalp because I'm sure she put a bit of some oil. She washed her hair. She's got deep pigmented hair, which means um, there are some strong hairs in there. She's got intermediate hair. Those hairs are ready to fall. And then we've, she's got a bit of uh, regrowth as well. Let me see the, the hairline. Yeah, it's a lot of oil. So. Yeah, it's very soft and thin. She's relaxed it. 
Don't put too much heat on your hair because you're gonna make it, yeah, you're gonna break it more. You can sometimes, yeah, you can put something. Okay. Don't worry, you don't have to say. There are two things or five things happening here at the moment, okay? She has patches. Obviously, she wants to look good as well. However, these cornrows were too tight. One of them has already pulled off like that. So it's likely that it came out with her hair. Secondly, there's a comb somewhere. This comb is a wig as well. So it's a wig that she has. So by the time you pull this, to support it, you're pulling more hair. So you think you're doing good to yourself or you're trying to not to break more hair, but you're actually making it worse. You see, she's actually making it worse. I'm sure this is from here. I can see some bumps already. It was tight. How long ago did you do that? How long ago did you have this? So two weeks. So if two weeks, then it keeps. By the time she realized, the problem is worse. I cannot get them here because she has the wig. Okay, so there's a lot going here. She needs help, and she has to get the attention as soon as possible, because I can see, even though it's a wig, but apart from the coat, it's also sewn here, obviously, so it doesn't fall. But there are, there are ways to do this. There are ways to um, help with self-esteem. If you don't have the money to go, whatever treatment available, to stop this. Because there are tons of black women who are like her, and they are suffering as well. You see? I have to ask her. <laughs> I have to. She asked, how, what did she do to get her hair like this? So I'm going to ask her why she, wh why she ended up here, like that. What were you doing? Bonding. Bonding with glue? Yes. And what else? That was it. I got it messed up in my hair. So you got it? I just said it was the bonding was there. Mm -hmm. And I washed my hair, mm -hmm. and I got it matted up. So what do you recommend? So I think I can answer that question. First of all, she's going to actually need to book an appointment with the trichologist and for us to have a more detailed look. So like I said, this here what we're doing is just for you as a demonstration. She'll need to come back to us at the clinic. We'll have a, the consultation, and I'll tell you a bit about that later. Um, and then we will then advise on treatment, because each treatment is bespoke to each individual. So there isn't just like one cure for everybody, even though your hair may look similar. So you can see the scalp. I don't have to say anything. Here, there's a bit of hair, okay, on the side. Here, 
you can see. And I'm not, uh, I'm not in the position right now to tell you what I see unless it comes to consultation. You see, this is why I, that's why I'm here. It's like a gospel to me. It's like preaching to me. Because someone like this, because she's desperate, she will go to her shop, product shop, and they'll tell her, oh, buy this coconut oil or buy this snake oil or watermelon oil or whatever, and your hair will grow in three weeks. Because it's, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't. Before, when somebody comes to me, before I become a trichologist, so oh, Belinda, um, can you give me some oil to, I said, oh, yeah, I just put this one. Be, no. No. I will not lie to you. I will tell you the truth so that you can save your money. And, and the treatment available for you, depending on how damaged the hair is, if you can afford it, fine. If you can't afford it, then you have to live with it. This is why you have to stop some care, care practices. Because when it's too late, it's too late. In anything, when it's too late, it's too late. I used to go, I used to braid my hair a lot in tiny, nice braids, and I lost my hairline all over here. Four or five years before I got it back. Anytime I'm doing any style, I make sure I don't touch my hairline. I don't touch, I don't touch me, but I know my You have to fight for what you want. Not killing some of the pleasures that you want. Because you can have it all. You cannot have it and eat it. You cannot say, I want to look all to still kind of maintain my hair. And it should still be the same. No. If you put glue in, think about it. Glue on your hair. Obviously, even if you put glue remover, you will still have some hair coming off. So if you do it consistently, you're going to lose more hair. <laughs> well done, darling. So, I'm very, very passionate about this. I'm very, very passionate about it. And I'm educating school children as well. Because sometimes they get bullied at school. And they feel like they need to belong. So, they don't even want to leave their own natural hair. Or they want braids. They want to look a certain way. Please, you have to have the self-esteem. Love yourself enough to say, no, I'm doing it. And you have to have also self-discipline. Some people are not self-disciplined at all. Anything goes. And then when they buy the oil and it doesn't work, so it didn't work, it's not good. No, you are not good. Okay, mom. Yes, first stage. We have three stages. First stage is when you braid your hair and you know that, oh, I've lost some hair here, so castor oil and other essential oils I have seen here as well are made to grow the hair back. That is, if it's not permanent, that can grow the hair back. Don't do that again. Castor oil is good, but it's temporal. And it helps with, not the thick one. You know, some of them are thick. Oh, you have to know which one. Yeah, no heavy oils on your scalp. So, sometimes some essential oils are good. You have to know which type. However, if you have some cicatricia problems, some hair loss problems, there are some oils that cannot go on your scalp. Because you have inflammation. It will make it worse. It's all about medication. I know people are online, concussion, making concussions. And then you put on your hair and you feel that it's good, but it's causing something else. Maybe your itchy scalp will stop, but it might be causing something else. So if you can with him on your scalp, I'm not going to recommend anything that will make you have a bit more redness. You need to heal first. Some people come to me, they have babies or their medication, they're losing their hair. I say, no, darling, don't braid your hair for the next six months. Let's do treatment. Or even if you're going to braid, you're going to do certain things. Now, I think people have a lot of questions. So if you can put um, my colleague on, she's actually waiting. She's in Amsterdam. She's going to answer more questions. If the question is very personal, don't answer because we are Tell it to me later because some of the questions are very personal as well. Then you can go to her own. Jackie, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Coming on, darling.
So whilst I'm just waiting for my colleague to um, come on, so all those specific questions that you need to ask, um, just to repeat, like I say, because this is live, and you know that it's personal, please don't say it here. I'm more than happy offline to be able to answer those questions. So perhaps some more general questions as to what you've seen here today, I would um, recommend you ask. Even as well, if you wanted to ask a little bit more about the um, treatment plan, that would also be a good idea. You could ask um, my colleagues about it. Um, has she joined? Okay, so she has joined. So she's, she's coming in from um, Amsterdam. So you shall see her. I think because this is already on there, um, I think that I will just very rarely just briefly speak about them the consultation so the consultation as you see on the screen is normally 150 pounds but for today and for today only i know it sounds kind of a cliche it just it will be 100 pounds and how you book with me is i will do a card and on that card if you can just simply write your name your telephone number your email and then your availability because we will work around you because we do understand that you've got to go to work etc so give us a few dates that we can work with um and then just like i so yeah she's not there yet and um, so with the consultation consultation takes about an hour and hour um within that consultation like i said you will afterwards you'll get a description so it will be like a, a full script as to what has taken place and your recommendation will also come on there. Also, if we recommend that the GP, that will also be written and what you would be requesting from the GP. And a detailed plan will be given and when you'll be coming back into the clinic. So it won't be a simple case of we give you a piece of paper that you probably will know nothing about. We will explain everything and then be taking you through your treatment and your treatment options. So, yes, she's with us. Okay. So, um, question. So, before we. So, any questions that you want to ask, this is your opportunity. So, if you want to ask a question, you can just raise your hand and then I'll come over to you with the mic so that, like I say, the other members online can hear it as well. So, does anyone have a question? I believe that lady did. Okay, I'm going over. So, I've had consultation with the doctor, so I know exactly what I've got. Is it possible for my airline to come back, or have I just got a list with my that question. Hi, are you speaking to me? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I can't hear you. Could you hear us now? I can hear you now, yes. Okay, great. So we do have, or we already have a question in the audience. Um, I'll, ask, I'll ask our participant to ask, again, to ask again. Is that all right? Okay. That's okay, yes. Here we go, okay. Okay, so I was saying I've got a thyroid issues, an underactive thyroid gland. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but it's quite faint. So I heard about the thyroid issue, but I didn't hear whether it was underactive or hyperactive. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. Okay, so my issue is 
that I've got a underactive thyroid gland and my hair is thin and then it's got really thin and the complete hairline is gone and I'm asking is there something that I can do to um, to let that come back? Is there some form of medication, some treatment that I can take for that to resolve itself? Okay, I think I had the question correctly. Uh, I also think you were looking at a different camera, so I could just see the back of you. <laughs> so, um, could somebody confirm that I heard underactive instead of hyperactive? So, so can I just, so you can hear me though, can't you? Yeah, I can hear you better, yes. So, so um, it's, it's an underactive thyroid. An underactive thyroid. That's correct. Okay. So, um, I think I understood and, the question. Um, her initial complaint is the thinning of the hair. Yes. And may I ask how long um, she's had the diagnosis? Over seven years. Over seven years. Um, is she on any medications for it? Hello, Belinda. All right, thank you for the question. I heard it perfectly this time. So, um, are you taking any medications for your thyroid? Thyroxine. 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 Okay, so level thyroxine. That, that's what it would be called, so level thyroxine. Okay, I, um, I can address that. Um, maybe a bit of background first. With an underactive thyroid, this is what we would call hypothyroidism. So hypo meaning little, so not enough, uh, of the thyroid hormones being produced. So um, there are two different categories for that. I'm not sure which one you actually have. Most people have something called Hashimoto's. So uh, Hashimoto's uh, thyroiditis. So this is 
when it's actually autoimmune um, and it's the only immune system attacking the thyroid gland cells, causing them to underproduce the hormone thyroxine, which is why you're taking the medication. Hypothyroidism in itself does affect hair. So what you're experiencing is a side effect of the condition itself. So it will make hair thinner, uh, dry and brittle in a lot of cases as well. Usually people on level thyroxine see some improvement. The downside is that level thyroxine in itself can also contribute to thinning hair. So it's a bit of a vicious cycle because you do need the medication to help with your condition, but the medication also contributes to um, side effects that you're experiencing with your hair. Now, is it something that you can get some help with? I would say to a certain extent. Um, I would not say that if you do this or that treatment, it's going to absolutely guarantee that your hair will be full again. But I think it's something that you could see Belinda about at the clinic, and perhaps you could discuss PRP treatments with Belinda. That is platelet rich plasma. I think she went through that uh, during her presentation. Um, if your blood work comes back, um, with good values as far as um, certain factors that we're looking for, you could be a good candidate for that. It's not going to solve your issue completely, but it could help to um, get your hair, your hair to be a bit denser than it might be right now. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have any? Okay, we've got another one. Okay. Um, basically, um, my hairline is slightly receded on one side and I have quite a lot on the other side, but it hasn't gone that, that deep. But my hair is, um, it's, it used to be quite thick, but now it's quite thin. And when I part my hair, like in the front, if I part it there, it's like the parting of the gap is, is wide. It's wider. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wider than previously before. So, so um, I was just wondering, what could I take, could I take to make my hair more thicker um, to, to stop that gap when I part my Okay, thank you for your question. So this is a question that I get quite regularly from people, and um, this is also why it's very important to have a, a full-on uh, psychology consultation. Um, there are many hair loss conditions that can cause the clinical features that you just described. So the way that your hair like is receding and your parting is wider than it used to be and your hair is less dense than it used to be, that those can be attributed to, I would say, at least a dozen different types of hair losses. So it's important that you have somebody who specializes in this, as Belinda does and myself, have a look so that we do a full workup to find out what kind of hair loss you are experiencing because it's only based on that that we can recommend any sort of treatment options or home advice um belinda touched on the supplements part as well and this is really important not to just go out and haphazardly buy whatever promises you pick here because you have to understand that supplements are not really regulated and although they are not under drug regulations uh, meaning medications they do cause um, issues, so they can affect both your health, your general health, and your hair health as well. I would say you will need a blood test um, from the doctor. Belinda can specify to you which ones you will need during a consultation. And depending on what we find there, we, could, we will be able to make recommendations. Of course, you could go out and just buy a multivitamin or buy something that you think you need, but we're not actually sure whether that's your issue or not. I had a blood test, um, mm -hmm. um, but I had a blood, I had a blood test about uh, three, three, four months ago. Yes. And everything, the only thing that they found out that my, my cholesterol was a bit high, mm -hmm. and now I'm taking um, um, statin for that. Yes, yeah, statin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, I, for the last maybe 15 or 16 years, I've been taking um, 
um, like an inhaler because they found out that I had bronchitis. Yeah, oh, so yes, so I don't know if that contributed to it as well. Okay. Well, uh, usually the uh, medications used for the inhalers don't tend to have adverse effects on uh, hair growth. So I won't put it down to that. Um, I think that your um, nutritional values need to be investigated because when they say that everything came back normal except the cholesterol, it depends on what they tested for. So as oh, hair experts... Yeah, I gather that, yeah, yeah. They only were testing for certain things. That's correct, So, which is why we would ask for specific drugs. Okay. Exactly. Into that, that consultation. Yes. Does anybody else have a burning question? Um, we had something to add to in my family, and I noticed that I had a patch on the front of my, my airline. Um, two years later, it still has a grow back. Is that a possibility that it could? Okay, uh, first of all, I'm sorry to hear about the traumatic experience, and um, it very much relates to what uh, Belinda said as well about stress. So a traumatic experience like that will induce quite a high amount of stress in your body uh, at that time. Um, then we tend to produce more cortisol, which is, as we know, the stress hormone. It also activates some proteins on a cellular level called shock proteins. And I think, well, I haven't seen the patch that you're talking about, but I would venture that it may be an alopecia areata patch. Is it a round, is it a circular patch? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. As yeah. Yes. I do see that quite often. Of course, I can't diagnose, I have not examined you, but um, I would say first is to get confirmation of what it is. Uh, so from somebody who can examine you, so through consultation, and then you can discuss uh, options for that. Uh, I would say as well that perhaps if you are working through the trauma, if you're actively working through um, how you're feeling and how that's affected you and your stress levels reduce, uh, most of the time, what can well not all the time for a lot of people what happens is that the hair just recovers and starts to grow back uh, if it is indeed alopecia areata but i don't know that for sure because i have not uh, examined you uh, through trichoscopy belinda would look for certain signs on the scalp that will indicate to us what it is and if it is alopecia areata it's an autoimmune condition so it's actually your immune cells attacking your hair follicles when your body goes into shock the, through the stress that you've experienced. So I would suggest relaxation techniques or doing activities that usually take your mind off of things and allow you to calm down. And that's just one factor that you can address. The other factor would also be your diet. So trying to avoid inflammatory foods, a lot of um, uh, saturated fats, um, junk food basically. So if you stick to whole foods, so things that have not been processed so much, that already reduces the risk or the likelihood that your immune cells will turn against you because that is what an autoimmune condition is. And if it's, it's valid for anybody actually, but especially so for cases of alopecia areata, as I think you may be describing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there any video? No. No? no? Awesome. awesome. I think all the questions that have been asked needs consultation or some kind of help because we need to see what is happening for a recommendation to be done. That's what uh, my colleague said. So it's not just by talking or giving a little bit of guidance, but seeing the hair follicles and having a proper consultation or clinical examination done. It's very, very important. So um, you can see uh, my colleague later if you need help and any advice towards um, consultation as well. May I add something quickly, Belinda? Yes. Yes. Okay. She wants to add something quickly. Okay, I'm sure. Yes. Is it okay yes. to speak now? Sorry, go ahead. Yes, okay. So I just wanted to say that um, it's, it's tempting sometimes to look at your own scalp or hair issues and compare it to somebody else's that may look similar to yours. It may even be that you have the exact same type of hair loss, but it doesn't mean that 
and the same treatment options would work the same for both of you. You might be at a different severity uh, scale than the person that you're comparing yourself to. So I think that it's very important to have a consultation first. Um, there are so many options out there. And by um, when Belinda said, oh, don't just go slap on products, it doesn't mean that all the products are bad. They may just not be appropriate for you right now at this time with the, what you're dealing with. So don't copy mm -hmm. somebody else's treatment plan. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, we are all different people and your scalp and your hair would react differently to a different treatment compared to somebody else. That's what I wanted to say. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, can we go to the second time, Jantina, Yes, maybe she can ask that one, or um, we have to put on that. Um, what are we doing? So, um, so Jackie, do, do you have any, like I said, I think you've already touched, not ready, but is there any other piece of advice that you might want to give before you, you leave us? Yes, absolutely. So, um, because I, I noticed that the congregation is mostly uh, black women, am I not? Am I correct? That's correct. That's correct. You're yes, correct. you are correct. Yes. So, and uh, Belinda did mention CCCA, which is Central Centrifugal Cicatricial Alopecia, which unfortunately mostly affects black women. Uh, it does not mean that it does not affect other ethnicities. Uh, a lot of Indian women are prone to that as well. But uh, we often do carry the, uh, I would say, the offensive gene uh, for that. So we tend to have a predisposition. But having the gene for a particular condition does not necessarily mean that you're going to get that condition, that disease. It's like you may have the gene for breast cancer, but it doesn't mean you will develop breast cancer. You're just at a higher risk of developing it than somebody who does not have that gene. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that because of our sort of, I think, cultural hair care practices, as Belinda touched on, doing a hairstyle that's going to last a long time because we find our hair, our natural hair, difficult to deal with, um, this can lead to triggers of uh, CCCA and scalp issues. We A lot of black women suffer from uh, seborrheic dermatitis. This is pretty much like dandruff, but on a, uh, on a more severe scale than dandruff. Uh, so I would really encourage all of us there to wash our hair and scalp on a regular basis. Do not be afraid to use shampoos. I know that we have YouTube University, which is wonderful for so many things, but also not so wonderful as in the Chinese whispers. It's passing on information that keeps getting diluted and changed and incorrect over and over. Um, if you do not wash your hair that often, and I'm going to say if you, let's say, wash your hair once a month or less than that, don't be afraid of sulfates in your shampoos because they are some of the best cleansers. Unless you have a scalp condition, that will not work so well with sulfates. But I will say if you can wash your hair once a week, once every two weeks, I would say at the most once every three weeks, please do that. A healthy scalp leads to healthy hair. And this is whether you have a scalp or hair condition or not. I see too many black women coming into my clinic with issues that are preventable. And because they leave it for so long before they seek help, it gets to a stage where it's almost irreparable. So don't suffer in silence. If your scalp is getting too itchy, if you're feeling a burning sensation, if um, you're just not coping with your hair, go see somebody about it and get the correct help. And I think that there are so many issues that are preventable in our community, but because we're not seeking help, we are ashamed to talk about it, or we are just too concerned with the aesthetics of our hairstyles we end up suffering a lot more long-term. And I think <laughs> that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've been speaking about this um, often, and we've, I mean, I've, we've said it like over and
over and over again, I can't emphasize enough about coming to actually book a, a consultation. And I know some of you are probably looking and thinking, but that's still quite a lot of money. And yes, we do understand, but there is also quite a lot involved in doing these. But don't be entirely put off by this. Let's have a discussion. I'm going to be at the back. I've got, we have brought some products from the Trichology uh, Clinic with us. Um, come and speak to us about them and we'd be more than happy to just go through um, anything that you may have. Now, like I said, in terms of your personal questions, again, we're not going to answer those personal questions a bit more because we're gonna need to dig deeper asking your history, like your medical history, and things like that, which is not, this is not the forum for that. It will be an, a situation where we, we can sit down and have uh, a, a personal conversation. Does anyone, um, so in order for, for us to do that, what I've done is I've just brought some blank cards, and I would ask that you, like I say, you put your name, you put your um, phone number, and your email, and then availability for the time that you're available to have this consultation. And these consultations are face-to-face. -face. Um, they're not done via Zoom, because like I say, it does include an examination of the scalp. So please do come and see me afterwards. Please write your name down. And if, you, if, you, if you've got some real deep concerns, especially around the cost of this cons consultation, please be open, please talk to us about it. It's better that you get the support as opposed to just leaving it here saying, I can't afford it, I'm just gonna carry on suffering in silence. Do not suffer in silence, okay? We are one, we are a community, we're sisters together, let's help one another. Okay, thank you very much. So lastly, just to say that Belinda did mention that, and I will say it as well, is that she did say that she does um, do, uh, she's also a hairdresser, so alongside her trichology business, she does also have her hairdresser business. We are more than happy that once you've seen the trichologist, you can come and get, get some suitable protective styles. And I, and I mentioned that, that word suitable because, of course, what you may have thought was good enough for you at this point, we will probably say you can no longer do, which means now we need to think of different ways to style your hair, something that you will be more comfortable in, in doing. So, again, this, this might, might be delightful. You never know. Suddenly you, you, would, you would probably look better with longer hair or shorter hair. But let's, let's just have a look and let's have that conversation. All right, thank you very much, ladies. Thank you. Uh, just say, let's just give them a round of applause. I <laughs> uh, just want to just thank you guys for coming out and just sharing some really deep knowledge. I hope each and every one of us learned something today. Praise God. I would say amen. Praise God. But <laughs> Yes, I hope you guys really, really take the, you know, the information. I've been there myself. I really um, enjoy how she looked after my hair and how I, my hair felt after leaving. And most of you probably knew my story. Well, Sister Micah knew what my hair looked like a like few years ago. It literally had the same patches, didn't know what was going on. And just through treatment and care, my hair has really grown back. So I really appreciate it. So Sister Belinda, let's have a really small token to just come. Just want to present this token to you and your team for just taking the time out and just coming out and sharing. Uh, <laughs> sharing these information with each and every one else. Guys, we have refreshments in the back, so if you guys want something to just to snack on while you just speak with her and her team or just browse around, we have something for you to munch on. So thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you coming. So just give her a round of applause again. So much. Um, I don't know if the apostle wants to give any final words or any encouragement before we go. If not, we're just going to close in prayer as we started. Do you want to say anything, apostle? Okay. <laughs> All right, we're just going to stand. I'm just going to quickly close in prayer. I'm just going to ask Grandmother Mullins just to close in prayer. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, and our God, we thank you for this evening, Lord. We 
thank you for our sisters that have come along to give us knowledge of things that we really didn't know or understand. And we pray, Lord, your blessing on them at this time. And they're going home. You will protect them and cover them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Also, thank you for the online viewers. And this is also recorded. So those who are watching on Facebook Live and also on YouTube Live, thank you for joining. And if you had any questions that we weren't able to answer, I'll just pass them on to, um, to Belle. And she will give you all the details as necessary. Thank you guys for watching. And have a lovely afternoon.